This podcast is brought to you by OEC and Collision Link Plus, a new product upgrade for collision repair shops designed to improve parts ordering, save more time, and capture more profits. Learn more at oeconnection.com slash collision link hyphen plus. Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Body Shop Business, the podcast. And first, I'd like to thank our friends and sponsor, OEC and Collision Link Plus. Well, folks, we're here again to talk about consolidation or the acquisition of collision repair facilities. And who better to talk to than the queen of consolidation, Laura Gay, the founder, president, CEO, head honcho, big cheese of the Consolidation Coach, which is a business that helps mm-hmm. shops sell to other entities, guides them through the process, helps them get the, the most money and the best deal that they can get. Laura, welcome. Thank you, Jason. And always a pleasure to connect with you and and for you to be so kind to invite me on. I love giving these updates and I always enjoy doing them with you. Well, you know, I love hearing these updates. And Laura, you know, like you said a long time ago, this consolidation thing has been going on for a couple of years now, hot and heavy. And every time I talk to you, you say it, it's it's shifting, it changes, you know, month to month, you know, one minute it's a buyer's market, one minute it's a seller's market, one minute it's a buyer's and seller's market. So here we are, I think we last talked uh, a few months ago, maybe longer than that. It is November 2022. I want you to tell me right now, is it still the best time ever in the history of the universe for a body shop to sell? Well, just like I told you before, it's literally a soap opera in the world of body shop consolidation and the soap opera continues. Um, Yes, there's still a lot of people buying, but just like before, things are starting to shift. Um, Just like we're seeing in the body shop world uh, and in general life, uh, interest rates are going up inflation uh we're seeing in every industry every market from buying a loaf of bread to buying paint to buying a sandwich at chick-fil-a everything has gone up significantly and consequently money uh getting getting money also has gone up i think we've seen mortgage rates uh double what they were this time last year uh all that ultimately will you know unfold into the world of consolidation And how that works is the consolidators, they don't have a big pile of money sitting around. They work with private equity uh, folks that fund them and fund their um, projects. And um, money is going to start to get most likely more expensive for them um, unless they've got some other deals worked out. And obviously, I don't know all of the the behind the scenes things that, that different consolidators already have worked out. But common sense tells you that that's you know, gonna come. And when these consolidators start to pay more money for money, for lack of better words, or the use of money, obviously they can't continue to make these ridiculous, crazy offers that we've seen in the industry. So I suspect that it may slow down a little bit depending on where the consolidators shake out with their money and their arrangements that they have. Um, or maybe the arrangements that they haven't already made. You know how that is. Um, and, um, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, obviously. So, you know, don't know where things are really going to go. But I think common sense tells us that's a pretty good indicator that um, if the money's going to cost more, uh, offers are probably going to be going down a little bit. Um, there's still plenty of strong offers out there. We're just as busy as we've been. Uh, we've just added several new staff to the team, gearing up for 23. I mean, we we are expecting to be busier in 23 than we were in 22. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's slowing down. I just think, again, it's just going to be a different market. Okay. Now, let's talk about the players. Um, you know, obviously, the big news a few months ago was Service King and the Crash Champions merging are the are the are the big players still the big players are they the, still the ones that are going to are the most aggressive as far as acquiring body shops yeah good question so i think that across the board you know i think when you think about you know those what i'm going to call middle players like crash champions 
classic Joe Hudson. Um, they're still super aggressive. Um, you know, they're still looking to buy a lot and make a lot of action. So as is the smaller players like Quality Collision Group and um, Open Road, and there's a few others that are like that that are still super aggressive that are also uh, wanting to um, do a lot of growth in 23 as well. And I know you mentioned um, over a year ago, one of the reasons there was a tornado of activity in this area was that there was a, a plethora of new entries into the market, new private equity, new players that wanted to buy. Is that still happening uh, where you, you know new people are coming in saying, hey, I'm interested in investing in, in, the, in collision? So I don't see as many popping up as we did last year. Um, so, I mean, I imagine they're still popping up, but I mean, it's kind of like anything, um, you know, has a life cycle, you know? And I think that life cycle of those people popping up was in that time when we spoke back then. And I think that now, you know, we're, I think Body Shop Consolidation has maybe two strong years left if, things continue to grow. And again, I don't have a crystal ball, you know what I mean? But I think we have two strong years left, whether that two years is now, or it gets delayed a little bit because of a recession or because of money becoming expensive. There's still a lot of platforms and markets that need to be built out uh, for the different consolidators. Plus, I'm sure there's gonna be some monumental moving between some of the consolidators you know, merging and making one and things like that. So, you know, I think we've got two more years of it. Um, you know, hopefully we'll see it in the next 24 months. And then after that, you'll start to see it taper off. You're already seeing a lot of the consolidators, uh, the bigger ones anyway, class, uh, excuse me, Caliber and Gerber doing a lot of brown fields and green fields. And what that is, is basically they're taking an old Toys R Us board, an old Toys R Us, mm, whoo, old Toys R Us building and turning it into a body shop. That's called brownfielding. And then greenfielding would be building a brand new facility from the ground up. Um, and some of the other middle one, middle uh, level consolidators are also doing some of that, but you see it more aggressively with the, uh, the larger consolidators. Let's go back to the Service King Crash Champions merger that happened a few months ago. And I remember you wrote an article for us and you said, you know, what's gonna, what's gonna happen after this? And I think one of the predictions you thought, well, maybe maybe they'll slow down with their acquisition because as they try to assimilate, as Crash Champions tries to assimilate the Service King brands into their family. Um, here we are three months later. What have you seen? Has Crash Champions stayed aggressive on the acquisition front? Have they pulled back a little bit as they try to um, get all the Service King stores on the same page with them and into their company. What, what is happening there? So again, I don't have a crystal ball and uh, I work with those guys a lot, but everybody is very strategic about what they do and they're not real, um, you know, what we'll say chatty Cathy's about it. But I think you and I, you know, read the, the news that's out there and then the little bit that I get from them it seems like they're just as aggressive as they were. They may have took a little breath, you know, once they, you know, um, made the uh, Service King acquisition and that was complete, you know, just to get integrations going and get everybody going in the right direction. Um, but they're buying shops just as aggressively, uh, in my opinion, as they were prior, be, prior to um, uh, them purchasing. And then here in 2023, they already have deals slated out uh, quite some ways into 2023 to close. Um, like they're already set up and staged to happen. Interesting. You know, and it just occurred to me, I look at your business and obviously you were a former shop owner. I believe you own three shops maybe, and you sold them uh, over a decade ago, right? To a consolidator. And it occurred to me, you know, you have a thriving business here with the market, the way the market's going. But you said two years maybe we have left of this crazy consolidation. Uh, what happens to your business? Do you, do, you, do you keep it going? Do you just on a smaller scale or do you switch gears to something else? Or uh, because we're obviously right now, uh, you've got more clients than you know what to do with. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, a lot of people say that to me, gosh, Laura, what are you going to do when, when body shop consolidation is over? And, uh, 
there's a lot of other verticals um, that are consolidating. I mean, pretty much every industry is consolidating. Um, and uh, so we're definitely looking at other verticals, car washes, uh, paint jobbers, mechanical um, opportunities, um, service centers, um, just there's all sorts of different verticals that we are looking at and we'll be getting into. But right now, we are specifically only focused on uh, collision uh, auto body repair centers that want to sell and helping them sell and get out and get as much as they possibly can because you only get one chance to sell and you can't make any mistakes. So we want to be here to support them. We were one of them. Everyone that works for us was a former shop owner, has sold. So they've been down the line. They understand it. So this is what we're doing right now but we know there's plenty of opportunity um, just at SEMA. I mean, I had four people approach me at SEMA um, a couple weeks ago asking me about selling their business completely separate industry. Um, so there's definitely a lot of verticals that are going to be forthcoming for us, and we're grateful for the opportunity uh, to have those. All right, so bottom line, Laura, you know, you're predicting maybe a slight slowdown as money gets more expensive, but at the same time, we've you know, consolidation is going to be still happening over the next two years. If you're a body shop today and you're looking to get out, uh, you're at the right time, the right stage of your life, you're looking to sell, um, and let's say your, your business is thriving, you've got good sales, you've got a lot of insurance work, you've got uh, a lot of long-term employees, all the, the good things that a uh, uh, consolidator is looking for, um, you know, what is their opportunity right now? Is it still a good time to sell? And then talk to me about the shop that maybe has to get their act together. They want to sell, but they got to get their act together. Um, their business is not as good as uh, as fine tuned as it should be. Do they have time to get it to get their ducks in order and and sell? Right. So yeah, it's still a great time to sell. Uh, I think the difference is between last year and this year. I, I think we know 100% last year that things were going to be great offers. People were going to be getting, honestly, and in some cases, stupid offers. Um, if they didn't sell, they were kind of fools. Um, and um, I just think that, you know, instead of, you know, being wide open, uh, you know, making a pass down uh, the drag strip, you know, we're, 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 we're not going to be making a wide open pass. We might just be backed off just a little bit. Um, and pedaling it <laughs> down the drag strip instead. Um, I think that's the big difference. Um, but I think it's still going to be just as busy. I mean, we, we're hiring people. You know, like I said, I just hired two people because we know we're going to be busier than we were last year. Um, so we're gearing up for that. So I would just say, you know, if a shop's thinking about selling, um, maybe they think they need to get their ducks in a row. A lot of times you don't. The biggest thing that drives values in these businesses are your sales. Um, so I guess if I was to tell a shop one single thing to focus on is get your sales as high as you can. Um, and um, that would be my number one thing to tell them to focus on. But again, you know, kind of the window of opportunity to do all that stuff, to focus on improvement and change, kind of, I don't want to say is shut, but if it, it's hard to, you've got to have a year, year and a half of history under your belt when you go to sell, you know, we're only got two years left. You kind of, you kind of run out of time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Unfortunately, but, but please know, you know what I mean? Everybody shop has value. You know what I mean? And that's the unique thing about us is what all the consolidators are doing. And we also have some small consolidators, people that might have one, two, three, four shops that are also looking we pretty much know where there's a fit. You know, it's kind of like going to the shoe store. Not that you're going to buy high heels, but for us chicks, we go to the shoe store and sometimes we're looking for a high heel. Sometimes we're looking for sandals. Sometimes we're looking for flats. You know, we know the, the right shoe for the right um, foot, if that makes sense. And, um, you know, that's something that we, you know, we're happy to try to help people even if they just want to give us a call and talk through it. That's one thing that we, we just want to be a source of friendship and guidance to people that are thinking about selling because you certainly feel like you are on an island all by yourself. I know that's exactly how I felt. Um, I really just felt all alone because you can't talk to anybody about it, you know? That's a very good point. And you as a former shop owner can relate to them and their trials and tribulations 
and the stress of the job and the dynamics of the industry. So that's great. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for being on the podcast again. You're a wealth of information about this consolidation going on. It's still hot and heavy. It's still a trend. And uh, the industry is, is very interested uh, to know where it's going. So thank you for being a guest. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me on. I always enjoy doing these with you, truly, genuinely. Thank you. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Body Shop Business, the podcast. Check out BodyShopBusiness.com for more podcasts.